Okay, this is just a quick exercise in uh, bringing a sequence of photographs from your digital camera to your computer, putting them into a layer stack in Photoshop so that they're ready to import as an animated sequence into Flash. Sounds complicated, but it's only a few steps. So the first thing you need to do is to bring <laughs> bring your um, photos into your computer, onto your desktop. And there are two ways that you can do it. You can put them into a folder for your animated sequence, or you can do what I've done here is I imported a load of photos. There's uh, three different sequences here, and I've given, given them a different colored highlight. So to do that, you just shift click to highlight all of the files, right click on the selection, and you've got an option there for color labels. So you'll be able to do that. I found that more convenient in this case. It doesn't really matter. You can do it either way. I'll show you. In Photoshop, you don't need to have a new file open. It'll create one for you. It's File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. I'm going to select Files. You could select Folder, and then just you select just the folder and it'll bring all the images within that folder in. So, I'm going to select that one, and then shift click to highlight all of those files, all of those yellow ones. It's a walking eggplant man. So, there's the list, they pop up in this screen, I just click OK, and they'll gradually import into a layer stack. You can see here, it's gradually starting to build. There's two layers, three layers. If this is from a from a decent digital camera taken at a higher quality, it's going to take a long time to import all these images. So you're better off going and get a cup of coffee, and I'll pause this and come back in a sec. Okay, so we're back, and you can see now that there is a layer for each and every one of those photographs. Now... What we want to do next is make sure that the images aren't too big. There's no point in making an image larger than a screen can, uh, can reproduce. And I'm imagining, well especially this crappy little thing that I made, just as a little joke, when I was bored at my parents' house. Um, it doesn't need to be any larger than something for YouTube. So 640 by 480, that's your standard regular television set resolution. Uh, widescreen is 720 by 480. Some cameras shoot at, at a widescreen aspect ratio and others shoot at regular television aspect ratio. You, you'll know because you'll hit constraint proportions. If this was proportionate, then if I put 720, that would be 480. If I put 640, it's 480, so I know. You can kind of tell by looking after a certain amount of time. Blah, blah, blah. So that will scale all of your images down to that resolution, which isn't bad. Like if I go view, actual pixels, that's the size. That's the size it will appear on screen. So that's pretty bloody reasonable, really. Now, save that file, so in here, I'm going to take that, save that as Eggplant Man Walks, save. It's just a regular Photoshop file, just happens that all the layers are your frames of animation. Now we come to Flash, we create a new document in Flash. Hit the, uh, well, you can hit the size there down in the properties pane and change that to 640 by 480. And, well, the frame rate, you can, you can alter that at any time when you've got the animation in there. It'll become more apparent what the frame rate should probably be. So let's go to File, Import, Import to Stage. Then we find that Photoshop file we just created. Hit the import button. This can take a little while sometimes to appear. 
I don't know if it is. No, there we go. It's quick because it was only 640 by 480 and there's not a huge amount of frames here. Now, these should all have a tick next to them if you want to import them all. Uh, if all the layers were showing in Photoshop when you saved it, it always will. If not, all you have to do is sort of click and drag and you end up with ticks next to them all. Just keep an eye on it. You want to convert layers to keyframes, not flash layers. And you want to, if you haven't already done it, the 640 by 480 thing, you can set the stage size to the same dimensions as the Photoshop canvas. It's saying something a bit strange there, but we'll see what it does. I'm going to click OK. And there it is, there's my animation. Now sometimes when you're taking a photographic sequence and you import it into, flat, into Photoshop, it reverses the, the order of the frames because it imports one and then puts all the others on top of it in the stack. It's not a big deal. All you have to do is select all of your frames, right click on them and go to reverse frames and that will put it back in the correct order. Now this is an animated loop. So if I want to watch this, I can go to control, loop playback, just press the return key and I'll get to see it looping. That's it. That's it done. So you could use that to um, to shoot stop motion, to shoot anything that you like. You could also work directly in Photoshop on multiple layers, creating a new layer for each frame. Photoshop even has an animation palette, which you can see down here. All you have to do is, once you've imported that, click on there, make frames from layers. That'll give you the opportunity to play it within Photoshop. It's um, The only problem with that is that you can only export it as an animated GIF. That's the only way you can create this animation from Photoshop. So it's a bit limited in, in its scope. That's why we took it to Flash. Okay, that's it. Great. On with the show.